What is up guys and welcome to Bill. It is a very cold and rainy Alabama day and we are going to be lowering the front of the MG. Now these cars are super old school and so some of the things we're going to have to do to lower it are going to be probably different than stuff you've ever seen. It's not as simple as just throwing in a coilover kit made for the car, which you can do if you've got an extra sixteen dollars to $1,800 or sometimes $4,000 laying around, but we don't. So I'm going to work on lowering this car. I'm going to show you guys how I plan on lowering this car using some creative processes. Let's do it. Okay, so the first thing we gotta do is basically disassemble the entire steering, rotating assembly in the front. I've already done this on the other side, so I would know how to do it when I actually video it. It's actually quite simple. Uh, everything about this car is really simple, which is great, but you run into some issues with the fact that these cars are really old and most of the bolts end up getting seized, so we may have to do some cutting. The first thing we're gonna remove is this tie rod in. Now these are kind of like a press joint, and when they've been in there for a long time, they don't really like coming out. The way to get them out, and this is crazy, but it's true, it's the same with ball joints, you just hit them really, really hard with a hammer a bunch, and eventually they just pop out. that I bought I bought a tool specifically for this job this is a pickle fork and these are great if you got to replace your ends the problem with them is if you're not replacing this this end or this boot they will destroy boots on ball joints and tie rod ends so if you're gonna replace them you can use a pickle fork and uh, basically they just pry the thing out Next step is going to be remove this bolt right here. It's kind of a carriage looking bolt uh, that just goes to the top here. When this comes out, the whole assembly is going to kind of want to swing out of the way. So we're going to throw a jack up underneath the control arm. That'll hold it and then we can pull this bolt out. This is a slide hammer tool that I made several years ago to remove stuck CV axles from my MR2. I also use it for my wife's Honda Pilot and I've used it for several other cars. It is such a great tool, uh, but it's just some threaded rod, I think 3 8 inch, vice grips, and then the end, end of a sledgehammer. And uh, what I'm gonna do is grab, now that I've got this bolt kind of moving, I broke the rust free, I'm gonna grab it with the vice grips and then we'll just slide hammer it out. This is what people hate about old rusty cars. The bolts are stuck. So uh, I have got this done. I wanted to document this though. We've got vice grip on our slide hammer and then a pickle fork on the vice grip. So that's prying the vice grip out and then we'll slide hammer it the rest of the way and I think that it's gonna work this time. Okay. I ended up having to use this thing which is like a puller tool and kind of press this thing out some. But I think we're almost there. There it is. Man, that was difficult. This thing on the end is an extractor. Uh, I tried like spinning it out. Anyway, that was a nightmare, but it's over. That didn't work. And so now we should be able to, uh, whew, now this is stuck. What in the world? Oh, I see. That needs to come up some more. That's what happened. I didn't have enough tension. That's why. All of that. <laughs> so dumb. So the reason that was so difficult is I didn't have enough tension on uh, the lower control arm. Lesson learned. Now this swings out like that. Uh, we should be able to slowly lower this. The sway bar is still connected, so we'll have to get that in just a minute. Today's video does not have a sponsor, but we are selling these shirts. It's the Built MGB shirt. 
as displayed by my 3D printer. And it is on sale this weekend only. So we're doing a pre-sale that ends tomorrow, Sunday, January 17th. There'll be $18. After that, we're just going to sell out the rest of our inventory and the price will go up. So if you want one of these shirts, go to builtofficial.com and you can pick up yours today. Thank you guys so much. Let's get back to the video. <laughs> Now, pull that. And this should lower all the way down. Whoop, that's probably good. There should be very little tension on our spring now. All right. So the spring doesn't have tension on it, so we're good. It's not gonna come flying out at my face. I'm gonna move my attention to this bottom bolt right here. On the other side, I had to cut it out. So I'm expecting that again. In fact, I'm not even gonna waste my time. I'm just gonna cut it. Battery's dead, of course. Oh, it's gonna come out. How great is that? That is great. That is great. Look at, wow. <laughs> I'm so glad I didn't just cut that. I was totally just gonna cut it. All right, cool. All right, wrist, don't fail me now. You're going to, aren't you? I can tell. We'll just, yuck. Well. Awesome. The next thing is going to be remove this A arm down here, and that is super easy. Just wrench. You'll see the car bouncing. It's okay. It's because of the way it's on the quick jacks, and it's something I've got to fix. There's a. You don't need to know it, I guess, but whatever. There's a basically a tube on the frame that makes it not sit level, and I've got to fix that. Like I said, we're just going to uh, zip that off with the. With the impact, because we can. Those washers had seized themselves to the bushings, which is kind of weird. You can see this is our bushing, <laughs> which is really bad. Now, we need to disassemble this hub. Now, I'm gonna use the vise to do this. And you may be wondering, why are we having to disassemble all of the steering components of the car to lower it? I'll show you in a minute. It has to do with the, the way that the MG suspension is set up, as well as um, wanting to maintain some decent geometry. All right. Now a downside to these old cars is they are they need like regular maintenance, regular service to basically all the parts. The upside is they're built for regular maintenance. So disassembly is super easy as long as they've been serviced. But if you get a car like ours that, you know, sat for 30 years and didn't drive or run anywhere, it's really a pain to get everything apart. For you guys that weren't here at the beginning of the build, I've already rebuilt those hubs and brakes and really the entire brake system. So that's why that came apart so easy. We'll have to work a little harder to get the rest of this thing apart. <clears throat> All right, and this is our spindle. The spindle uses a kingpin system. So there's a pin, that's this thing, that runs all the way up through the top and that is what the car steers on. This one feels decent, but we're still gonna break it all the way down, and I'll show you why. This is gonna be part of our lowering system for this car. Oh, that doesn't wanna come off. All right, 
Let that soak for about an hour. Let's see if it did anything. Whew. Okay, let's try this. So the final step to this process, well there's two, is we will flip it over, take these out. All right, with that out, there's just one more piece and it's this thing right here, it's spring-loaded. Mine are super old, so they're not very hard to get out. All right, and that is a completely broken down spindle. This thing is super dirty and really gross. There's some surface rust on it. It's just not in the best shape. We're gonna try to rectify that. Now, I am gonna take the next step, instead of going ahead and working on this and lowering the car effectively, I'm gonna take the next step to uh, clean this thing and uh, just get it looking better, looking like new because I am planning on keeping this setup. So the leaf spring was all experimental. Uh, I didn't know if I was gonna keep it that way and I still don't, uh, but this, I am gonna do it this way. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the steps to make it clean, make it like new, so that when we put it all back together, it'll be like a completely fresh, you know, suspension setup. And the way we're gonna clean it is one of my favorite ways to clean parts. Let's do it. Okay, now that my beautiful creation is done, I can tell you what's going on. I know what you're thinking, electricity and water don't go well together, but they do if the circumstances are right. So, what we did is mixed in some washing soda, which is like a salt mixture basically, into the water, and we put this rebar in every quarter as like, I think they're called anodes maybe? Connected all those with copper wire, and we've got our lead right here. Now all of our parts are hanging from copper wire as well. It's technically supposed to be steel wire because copper does some weird stuff during this process, but I didn't have any, so we're gonna use copper. Most of it's sheathed, so we shouldn't get too much reaction, but it'll be okay. Um, basically, all the parts are gonna be grounded, the copper wire is gonna be hot, and we're gonna run current through the copper wire, into the water, through the salt solution, basically, into the parts and out through the ground. That's gonna be the current. What it's gonna do is literally kick the rust off of the parts. Pretty cool. It also will help clean some of the paint and clean some of the uh, dirt and grime. So it's a really cool process. This is called electrolysis or water electrolysis. And they actually use it on museum cars to get rid of rust because it doesn't damage the metal at all. It just takes the rust off. Very cool. I know it looks crazy. I am trying to do multiple parts at a time, which I've never done. So I don't know if it's gonna work, we'll see. Um, but basically all of these are just wired together so that they can be all be grounded with one ground cable. All right, let's do it. We're gonna try this. This is a jump box. Okay. And... All right, 
we're getting current. Looks like it's working. All right, cool, it's working. Oh, it looks like it's working on all the parts. Yeah. So we're gonna let that sit for a couple of hours and uh, we'll come back and check on it in just a minute. Wanted to get a video of this before it got too dark. Uh, you can see the water is much dirtier, <laughs> very rust colored. And the rust has been drawn to the rods. So that's what it does basically, I guess because the rods are electrified, I don't really know the science behind it. But they draw the rust off the part and to themselves. So the parts are getting really clean and there is a point where this just doesn't work anymore. Once all the rust is gone, there's nothing else for it to pull. I think we're probably pretty close considering the color of this water, how nasty it looks in there. So I'll pull these out shortly. We'll rinse them, brush them down, and we should have some pretty clean looking parts. I'm going to pull these parts out and swap them over. I'm not gonna bother cleaning the water. Uh, it won't change the way the parts clean. Uh, and it's just wasteful, I think, so much water. So I'm gonna pull these out, I'll undo all of them, we'll put the other ones in the same spot, basically, um, on this board, so I won't have to redo any of the wiring, and uh, run it for a couple hours, and then we'll be good to go. All right, so it's obviously pretty dark out now. I wanted to show you guys this before I cut all this stuff off. Look, let's see, ooh, falling over. Look at the rust just piling up on these things. Insane. And you can no longer see into the water. So, pretty cool. What we're gonna do, I'm gonna get all the parts in here, I think they'll all fit, spray the oven cleaner on, cover it, and let it sit overnight and see what happens. I don't know what's gonna happen, but we're gonna find out. Oh, so right after filming that last clip, I got really sick. So this has been sitting for two days. Got a steady flow of ginger ale going to keep me not throwing up. Um, so this has sat for a couple days. Covering it seems, normally when I've done this, the, uh, the oven cleaner has evaporated off. Covering it seems like it did the, a good job of not making it evaporate. And these things are looking really gross, so that's good. <laughs> Um, what I've got now though is I've got some gasoline. I just got a couple gallons. I'm gonna rinse these things off with gasoline and uh, we'll use a toothbrush to kind of brush them. All right. It's too cold to hand wash these today. I decided to just load them up in the back of the truck. We're gonna go find a pressure washing area station thing and just pressure wash them. Uh, I think there's one that's local that's got heated water, so that'd be good. Uh, but yeah, use the pressure washer, because I, I was getting grease off, but it felt like mostly I was just spreading it around, so I think it was going to kind of blast it away. A parts washer would be good. I think I need to get one of those.
All right, these things came pretty clean. We're gonna run them home and get these parts finished up so we can finally put this stuff back together. Let's do it. And now it is finally time to lower the car. This part is a little bit sketchy. Uh, I don't know what else to say, but we're gonna do it and it's gonna be sick. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is grab a marker and our measuring tape. I'm going to draw a line. Now, we take the Dremel, and I'm going to go around that line with the Dremel just because the marker is really dark. It's red, it's all I've got. So this is gonna give me a bright line so that I can see what I'm doing. Check our measurement one more time. And now we make the straightest cut possible. It's not gonna be super straight, but I think we can fix that later. There you go. Drop knuckles. We're not done. All right. Here's the deal. So I need to lower the front of my car by like, really by like three inches. And you can't do that with just springs on an MGB. It would take the A-arms and kick them all the way up. You'd lose all of your travel. It would just be horrible to drive. So the way you lower an MG typically is one inch drop springs, we'll drop it an inch, and then you can change your cross member out to go with the chrome bumper cross member, and that'll get you a little bit more, which we're not gonna do that for reasons with our engine swap and everything. But another thing you can do is get drop spindles. And so I found a place that makes drop spindles and said, hey, I'm looking at these, how much would they be? And they said $541, and you send us your old ones. And I was like, that seems really expensive. So I found a picture, found one picture of the drop spindles compared to a regular one, and I noticed something, and that is that these drop spindles had the top cut off, like we just did, and had a one inch spacer welded to the bottom. I was like, that's super simple and shouldn't cost $500, so what I did is I ordered a new steering knuckle kit our kingpin, steering kingpin kit, that's what this is called. And this is what everything kind of rides on. They're meant to be replaced, so they're easy to find kits for. So I called up my uncle and cousin who work at a machine shop and said, hey, could you guys make me this? Now what this is, this is a one inch piece of steel tubing. I think it's 1.6 inches wide and it's got a bore in it to fit this. This is a bushing that you guys just saw me cut down. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna press this in, which I was told I can do this with my hands, we'll see. And now we have a beautifully machined spacer with an OEM style bushing. Very exciting. Now if you're familiar with this kind of stuff at all, you may be wondering, well how do you grease that bushing? And I'm glad you asked. Let's see, where are we at? This kingpin, unlike the stock unit, has a grease fitting on the bottom, right there. So the grease goes up into the kingpin and out through this hole which is pretty awesome, so it will grease my new spacer. So now we get to put it all together. I'm so excited about this, I'm not even sure if it's gonna work, but I've spent so much time just like figuring this out and coming up with the simplest solution I could conceive to solve this problem. If it does, I'm gonna be so stoked. We can take our spacer with the bushing inside, slide it on, our newly modified knuckle, slide that on, and then there's this little top hat thing, that's where the, the upper control arm mounts to. This one's a little bit harder to get on, but it'll go just like that. And with that, we have a one inch drop knuckle. So because we've added an inch here and taken off an inch here, basically we take where our wheel mounts and move it up into the fender, which effectively drops the car one inch. So that is our first inch of lowering for the MG. Pretty excited about it. I think it's fairly safe. We will see. Now, a lot of the ones that I've seen weld this right here. I do have a welder and we could weld it, but I don't think it's necessary, so I'm not going to. Um, I don't see any reason to weld it. I just don't see any reason to weld it. Maybe so that you don't have grease kind of seep out of here or something, I'm not sure, but 
I'm just not going to do it. I'm going to leave it like this. If I find any issue with, issues with this over time, then uh, we may weld them together. But it's pretty awesome. There's no play of this kingpin inside of there, which was something I was kind of worried about. Everything works like it should. There you go. DIY drop knuckle. This cost me, uh, let's see, the rebuild kit was like 100 bucks, and this little spacer was actually donated. I don't know how much it would cost to have one of these made, but it was donated, so thank you, Uncle Van and Mason, <laughs> for, for hooking me up with this thing. And we have a drop spindle. All right, for round two, we are going to be shortening our springs, a.k.a cutting the springs. Now cutting springs has gotten a really bad rap and it's for good reason. A lot of new springs are not cuttable. They're progressive meaning that as your spring rate or as your spring gets longer the rate goes up. Um, old school springs are not. It's just a single coil spring. So we can cut this without too many issues. Now there is an issue of this flat section on the bottom uh, and on the top. We don't get to retain that. That may cause some problems, but I'm not entirely sure. We'll find out. Um, but other than that, I think we're going to be okay. Now, the whole purpose for me cutting these springs is I'm going to get some custom springs made. I think, I think that's the only way I'm going to get the drop that I want. I can order some springs from some MGV places that, um, that will lower the car an inch, but I think I'm going to need more than that. So what we're going to do first at first is we're going to cut out, um, I guess, one, two coils. Yeah, two coils, two-ish coils, which should drop us. I should drop us a lot. If it's too much, that's cool. Then I know I can just order a one-inch drop spring and throw it in there and be done. Uh, if it's just right, then I will have the specs for the custom spring that I need made. So, at specs for as far as like height and width and stuff go. Now, spring rate, I'm gonna have to experiment with a little bit, but I'll at least get a, a baseline or close to the height that I'm gonna need. For my spring. Now this just sits inside of there and it sits on this flat area, mostly flat area. So you've got about half the spring that's kind of flattened out. I don't know if we're going to try to emulate that. I doubt we will. We're probably just going to cut it and then sit it in there and see what happens. Let's do it. <laughs> Finally, reassembly time. I'm so stoked to be putting this stuff back together. Now, we did go with silver on this. One, because it's cool, but two, because I let my son, my four-year-old, pick out the color, and that's the one he wanted. The first one he went with was, pur was purple, but it was transparent purple, so I told him it wouldn't work. And then he picked silver. I would have done purple if he asked me to. And then also, probably one of the more important parts of this whole shindig, we need those. Uh, is bushing. So these are actually bump stops for the rear, which we haven't put in yet. Uh, and these are all sway bar end links. Um, but up here, we've got new control arm bushing. So not only are these going to look fresh, they are going to work much better than the blown out ones that were in there. Uh, if you guys remember the bushings that came in the car that were in the, the control arms when we took them out were really, really awful, falling apart. Just terrible. So these will go on there. And then we will put all our stuff back together and bushings in. And then we'll take everything over to the car and we can finally put this stuff back together.
All right, so both of our A-arm assemblies are done. The bushings are in. I've just got my springs kind of set on here for now. I'm keeping these tie rod ends, the stock ones, or not tie rod ends, but the uh, sway bar end links, because like I said earlier, I think I'm going to be upgrading the sway bar, um, and so that'll come with new links and everything like that. But I'm really happy with these bushings. They went in really easy, and I think that there is going to be a massive, massive improvement over the stock, mainly because the stocks were blown out. Um, now with poly you get a little bit of a stiffer material and it lasts a little bit longer from what I understand But more than anything we're going to benefit from just getting rid of broken stuff So now that this stuff is all settled and put together the a-arms are done We can move over to our steering assemblies and so you may be wondering why we are working on the ground Well, I have another project right here that some of you guys that follow me on Instagram already know about and uh, I've been working on it for you guys trying to get it done I thought it'd be a really fun kind of quick project and it has been everything but that, which has run into so many issues. So I've used up all my space pulling parts off of this car uh, to fix it, and now I'm here on the ground. But that's how it is sometimes. It's fine to work on the ground. We're going to put this stuff back together. I think I understand enough about it to do it. Let's go. Uh, the first thing we're going to need to do is reattach these arms. You can see I already did this one. We'll go ahead and... Oh, wrist. Ouch. Ouch. Go ahead and do the other one. And the next, another thing that I think that I'll do on revision two of this is cut a groove down here and right on the bottom of this for an O-ring. I think an O-ring would be really good for this because um, I think grease may leak out the bottom here. Yeah. I'm going to leave this loosely assembled now. I'll put it in the vise and tighten this nut down. But that should be a fully assembled drop knuckle. And it looks pretty cool. Alright, let's do the other one. All right, so I got this assembly put together in the vise, but you can see the bushings didn't really want to go in. This side's in and it's staying. This side keeps wanting to kind of push itself back out. So I'm not really sure what that's about, um, but there is kind of an alignment dowel, kind of cutaway, whatever, inside of the kingpin. I made sure that was lined up. It all lines up really, really well. So I don't know if that's causing some issues maybe, or I'm not sure. Anyway, I'm gonna keep this clamp on there until I get ready to put it in the car. That way, I don't have to worry about the bushing just popping out. Other than that, everything's back together so we can put the kind of hub assemblies back on. Before we do that, we gotta throw this one over here together in the vise. Um, basically, that just means tightening down that bolt since we're not putting the bushings in yet. Uh, and then we will be able to throw our hub assemblies back on, which is the discs, the kind of brake shroud things, and our bearings and bearing caps. And then we can finally throw these things back in the car. See this cutaway section. Uh, this was not my first idea. <laughs> I did experiment with this idea a little bit before filming, and the first idea required me to cut that away. Obviously, I didn't go with that idea, but I'm left with the aftermath, which is fine. Part of it. Now you guys that have been watching this build for a while will remember that, uh, I don't know, part like four maybe, three, I rebuilt the whole brake system and I started with this, I think, if I remember right. Anyway, every part of the brake system of this car has been replaced except for two hard lines up front and it's just because they were working. Alright, I'm 
I'm not sure if it's because of the cold or what, but these things are not wanting to go on. Every video I've watched, they just slide right on. Uh, but not here. Okay. So what I'm having to do is hammer one side on and then put this in there, hammer it in. Now we're gonna use this to press this thing in. <sighs> All right, that took forever. I will say that the second time around has gone way smoother. Just kind of knowing the order of operations, having the uh, bushing problem solved, it's all going back together fairly easily. Definitely think that there's like a, almost an art to working on these cars and that everything's not quite as precise, I guess, as you know a newer car is. So getting stuff to line up and work together takes some finesse. And I imagine you can get really good at working on these. And people probably are. Alright, so this thing has been on the quick jacks for like three weeks, a really long time, getting all the suspension reworked. I'm going to try to lower it down, but we are out of time. It's Saturday. I don't know when this video is going to come out. I'm planning on it coming out today. Hopefully that works, uh, but it'll be today or tomorrow, and I just ran out of time. Getting sick this week threw everything off, but I want to try to lower it. Now here's what may be an issue. Back in the back. You can see I, I just barely clearance the rear fender. We're gonna go up way up inside of the fender to give us a bunch of room under there, but I haven't clearance that out. And I don't really have the time to do it today. We'll do it in the next video for sure, but I don't have time to do it in this one. So what I'm hoping is that we can set it down without that metal contact in the rear tire. Uh, we don't wanna puncture, that would be bad. The front, we've got all the clearance in the world, so it's very cold today, I'm having trouble like making my mouth work. Anyway, everything works, it looks cool. Everything went back together okay. It was pretty difficult, but it was just the learning curve. And I left my sway bar disconnected because the in links are directional and I didn't realize that. I put them on the wrong sides. So I just left it disconnected. I think we're gonna replace that. You might have also noticed I did all this work on the suspension, but I did not touch the shocks. We're gonna get to that in a later video. We actually have a subscriber who builds these shocks and, and like makes performance versions. I'll tell you about that later. Um, but I'm working with him to set up a set of shocks for the front and rear of this car that should make it handle really well with this new lowered stance. Speaking of lowered stance, it's finally time to lower it or to drop it on the ground and see what we actually did. I will say that the travel right now, if you look on the front, 
the wheel is way higher up than it was when we started. So hopefully that's a good sign. And hopefully we still ret retained some of our travel in the front. We don't have to do anything too drastic. All right, I'm just prolonging the inevitable. Let's get this thing on the ground. Dude, that looks so cool. All right. <laughs> Just, this thing looks so much cooler. It's absurd. So I did the render for this car, and when I did, I didn't know if we were going to be able to get the car low enough for this all to work, and I think, I think we've done it. It may actually be a little bit too low, and I'll show you why in a minute, but it does look very, very cool. So stoked. Now, I did have to put a jack right here to hold this side up because I just don't have the fender clearance enough for it to drop down uh, but it dropped down everywhere else all right you ready to see it gee oh that's too low for driving anyway it looks cool okay here we go you ready Okay, so I know too low doesn't exist, whatever, but this is not gonna work for me. I like to drive my cars, and if we were on air and we could just dump it out like this, that'd be cool, but we're not, and we're not gonna be, so it's gonna have to come up. Now, I knew I went a little bit crazy when I cut the springs as much as I cut them, and hindsight, I went a little bit crazy, but I did wanna see how much drop we could get, and we got a lot. <laughs> Especially up front. Now the rear I'm actually really happy with the ride height though. It seems like it might be a bit uneven Have any ground clearance. Well, we would have like a Yeah, a couple inches There are people who would drive with this low of a car, but I'm not one of those people Another thing I wanted to show you guys is on this side You can see the tire Pokes out a pretty good bit now. I don't know it could be yeah, I don't know what the deal is there. On this side, it tucks in, so I don't know if that is the different ways that I made these molds or if there's something going on when I put everything back together that's making this wheel stick out a little bit further. Overall, we're getting really close to the render and I'm stoked about it. Very, very cool. Okay, so that is it for this weekend's video. It was a big one. We got a lot done, and I'm so stoked to see this thing lowered. It looks so awesome, man. I'm, I'm just beyond excited 
about where we're going. Up until this point, you could kind of see what we were doing and kind of see the rendering, but um, it was kind of hard to get get the picture with the car sitting like a monster truck. And we've got no more monster trucks. So, very exciting stuff. In the next video, we're going to start working on our spoiler. It's going to be really sick. If you like spoilers, go check out my Instagram. I posted some pictures of the deck that we're starting out with. And uh, it should be a really, really fun episode. And it really should make this thing start looking super wild. I'm going to get on the internet and look for some springs. And there was a couple of bolts that I didn't want to reuse. So I'm going to order those as well. Uh, so we can get all the suspension dialed in and get this thing back on the street. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget that the t-shirt... Wait, this one. Here it is. I don't want to get it dirty. Don't forget that the new built MGB shirts are on sale right now for $18. We're doing a pre-sale. After that, we'll still have them for sale, but they'll be more expensive, and they will be in limited numbers. They'll be basically inventory, whatever's left over. So if you want one, go ahead and go order it this weekend because after Sunday, no more sale. They'll go to normal price, and we will be selling out of inventory. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.